circulating air. People are hungry and dirty, and even when the vessel reaches the dock, it won't be over. It'll take hours to disembark, and the process they are hoping passengers take easily, the company will take all it has to keep it orderly. Here's what else happened today. When the ship got within range of shore, the pictures and the story started appearing on the web. Social media will now tell this story with scenes like this. Sleeping on deck, the bivouac area on the top deck, the struggle to charge cell phones in the bowels of the ship. It will be tougher now for Carnival Cruises to tell their story with these nightmare scenes appearing everywhere. We begin in Mobile tonight with NBC's Janet Shanley. And Janet, good evening. Brian, good evening. Yeah, late this afternoon, the arrival time of the ship was revised yet again. Now, not until 10.30 or 11 o'clock Eastern at the earliest. And Carnival says after that, it's going to take some four to five hours to get people off the ship. So conceivably, this could be close to an all-nighter for thousands of people who are already exhausted. The crippled cruise ship Triumph limped towards Mobile, slower and later than expected, dragged along by four tugboats. Hours into the operation, a tow rope from one of the four tugs snapped. Another setback for exhausted passengers. For their waiting families, more frustration. It's not a good scenario, but tell us the damn truth. For what you know, we haven't heard anything truthful yet, to my knowledge. As the ship crept closer to port, passengers' desperation became visible. Signs made from bed sheets read SOS and help us. On board, Donna Gutsman told us there's much confusion. Very little has been uh, right on time or on point. So we're having a hard time putting our faith in what we're hearing. Gutsman took these photos, showing the improvised tent city earlier this week, where passengers slept on the sun deck after the power went out. Soaked hallways and the plastic bags used in place of toilets. There's sewer on the floor. Show passengers sleeping in hallways on lower decks and efforts to keep cell phones juiced on limited power. Gutsman says despite it all, passengers are keeping cool heads. No fights. People working together. This is going to be a long day. This is not a process that's going to happen fast. There's no way we can actually speed up the process to get the ship alongside sooner. Customs officials boarded the troubled ship to try to get the more than 4,000 passengers and crew processed before they arrive at port to expedite their departure. Carnival has chartered some 100 buses to take them to hotel rooms in New Orleans. As many as 1,500 are reserved. On Friday, some 20 charter flights will take everyone back to Houston. Joe Crouch and his friend didn't want to wait. They drove eight hours from Texas to pick up their wives. I figured they waited enough lines already and been through enough that there would be a whole lot easier just to jump in the truck and drive eight hours back home. They said it's close to the harbor. Friend Thompson waits too. He drove here from Kentucky on Valentine's Day to pick up his wife. He gave her the trip as a gift. This was my wife's first cruise, and I guarantee it will be her last. On board, there is only one working elevator, so passengers will have to carry off their own luggage. And there's a plan to get the elderly, children, and people with special needs off first. There was a woman who had a stroke today on board. The Coast Guard was able to take her off. But for everyone else, this is going to be a long night, and you can see the end of the morning before the last person. Is it?